I just want to start by saying um, how delighted I am to be here. I've really enjoyed listening to 10 questions over the past several weeks with the family. And it's just provided a wealth of information and a lot of great things to think about. So thanks so much to Vic and Marie and the rest of the team for all you've been doing. Um, it's really been wonderful and it's great to be here to talk about some things I really enjoy and care about such as uh, humor and uh, absolutely one of my favorites, organic chemistry. So I thought I'd start with a little bit of class participation and give um, anybody, especially the students, the chance to chime in here to tell us how you feel about organic chemistry. You can simply put in a one or a two, depending if you're feeling pumped up and excited like Chaz, or if you're feeling a little bit uh, worrisome like Elf. And you can also add any comments to, uh, <laughs> sorry, I'm already cracking up looking at your answers. I see a, quite a lot of twos. All right, I see a couple of organic chemists putting in ones for me. Thank you to the organic chemists who attended. Oh man. <laughs> <laughs> Rob Toblowski is my hero. This is great. I can't think about it anymore. Okay. So you actually see a pretty good mix here. Thank you for the participation. And it was because of OCHEM that made me switch to social sciences. So that's actually the type of thing that we hear far more often than educators like myself would like to hear. But it's incredibly common, I think, to think about this negative reputation of organic chemistry. So I just plugged in hardest classes in college into Google and you can see what, what pops up. Right there, front and center, organic chemistry. And if you look at some of the hits, you will see organic chemistry listed as the hardest class that is offered in college or one of the top three at almost any of these uh, websites and many others that you look at. And this is a longstanding viewpoint, right? I took organic chemistry in 1997. I had heard the reputation well before that, it's supposed to be a class that involves a lot of memorization. It's supposed to be impossible. It's a class often described as a weed out class, the type of thing that'll prevent students from getting into med school. And with that in mind, it'll often crush your dreams. And you know, this is just how it's been for a very long time. If you look at um, what happened in my case, I started at UCLA in 2007, huge focus on establishing a productive research laboratory. And not too long after, I jumped in to teach organic chemistry courses that, that look like this. So just to give you the quick scoop on this, this is Chem 14D, Organic Reactions and Pharmaceuticals. They're large classes. The enrollments approach 400 students. There's only about 360 chairs in the room. And this is the last class in the chemistry sequence for life science majors. So there's 14A, 14B, 14C, 14D. This is the last one, this is the last hurdle that these students have to jump through. And most of them are just looking to get it you know, wrapped up, right? So non-chemistry majors. And it's intuitive based on the reputation, but we also have data that tells us how interested students are at the beginning of the class. At the start of the class, the interest in organic chemistry, or the, the students that rate it high is only about 10 to 15%. Some say it's medium, but the vast majority of students in this class will say their interest in the subject is low. And so when you think about how do you walk into a class like that and try to um, increase engagement and get students excited about the task, it's really a, quite a daunting um, project, <laughs> if you will. And there are so many different pieces to this. And I won't go through all of these, of course, for the interest of time, but I'll say it's a lot about intellectual stimulation. So we're talking about creativity and problem solving. It's about making sure students understand the relevance. It's about providing care and support. And it's also very much about making it fun. And this is where humor um, can be an important asset to, to many of us who teach. And I'll say, you know, I'm, I'm an organic chemist. I'm not an expert in uh, pedagogy, but I can say for sure, humor has been well studied for decades in the context of education. If you're interested in reading about it, I can just point you to some of the reviews that are shown here on the slide. Right? But what I want to do with our time is just share with you a few things that we do, our feeble attempts at humor, to try to brighten up the classroom and increase student engagement. So one of the most important things that um, we do is just to establish a certain vibe on the first day of class. And this is ultimately a combination of showing students that the class is fun, but also letting them know that we are going to challenge them in this class. It's really a class 
about learning how to solve you know, what might be viewed as, as very difficult or impossible problems. So I know there are a few organic chemists that have tuned in. I'm guessing most of you are not organic chemists. So I'll just say, if you look at something like this and that looks weird, um, that's normal, right? And that's actually what the students in the class would say as well when they first start. They look at that, it looks like some sort of a chemical structure, but it's actually pretty big and complex. And when we talk about these impossible problems, what we'll do is we'll ask students to think about how to make the molecule from things that are much simpler, right? And along the way, we're gonna teach them a bunch of rules. But if you put it in this context and you show a student a molecule like this, that's daunting, right? But I always like to point out that students are awesome problem solvers. They love solving problems and they recognize that this is an important skill. And so that's really what we wanna develop. So our feeble attempt at humor here is to just ask the students, um, if you face a tough problem, what do you do? And the students will give us all sorts of good answers for this, for how they would address problems. And um, I'll just you know, say, you're wrong, you're wrong, you're wrong, and go to the board. And I'll give them the steps to problem solving. And you can see the first step is uh, quite simply to panic, right? And everybody chuckles a little bit, um, but it's meant to have some truth to it because when I see a tough problem, that's the first thing I do. I kind of panic and I think, oh my, what's, what's happening here? And until I keep my cool and um, think about it and rebuild my confidence, then I can take the next steps to relax, look for clues and, and do the different things we need to do in order to solve the problem, right? So it's a little bit of um, you know gentle humor, puts a smile on people's face and let them know that they're human and that's okay. And that's an important path towards being able to solve problems. We'll tie that into classroom demonstrations. And what happens often when students look at this is they just don't recognize it, right? It looks weird. But the skill of what we call chemical synthesis, how would you make this from simpler things? That's a skill they all have and they all know how to do. And so the demo that I guess adds a little bit of surprise is after we go through a lecture covering a lot of chemistry, I'll pull out a sandwich of some complexity like a, a tough molecule and I'll call down some volunteers. We, you can see there are some periodic table beach towels here. There's the Chem 14D toolbox that has all the ingredients they need. And the ingredients are the equivalent of what we call functional groups. And the students will have a couple of laughs. They'll try to build this sand, these sandwiches and they'll do it in front of everybody just to help them realize that they have the fundamental skill and will use the element of surprise in a pretty unusual demo to again, lighten the mood and have, let the students have a little bit of fun in the class. Um, I was actually able to find an old video clip of this particular lecture and again, context is everything as we heard in the, in, the prior, uh, in the prior talk. So hopefully you can see at least from the clip that at least the students are having fun and um, they enjoy this presentation. Okay, what do you guys need in there? I think that's bologna. He sees, he's, he sees bologna. That's like confusing a hydroxyl group for a bromide, guys. You know, you don't want to do that in a synthesis problem. Right, so again, just having you know something they're not expecting, students are a little bit confused, they're trying to figure out how all this stuff on the back of the board relates to the sandwich, and they start to see hints of that. I'll point out, um, it also is usually a crowd pleaser to give students these periodic table beach towels, and ultimately these turn into trophies, if you will, where you will see students like Edgar here uh, wearing his periodic, beach, periodic table beach towel across the UCLA campus. Another one that I wanted to show you that's really been a fun one is an assignment where we ask students or give them the opportunity to make music videos about organic chemistry. And we started to do this back in 2010. At the time it was uncommon. And I'll even say that maybe it was a little controversial amongst some of my colleagues, but ultimately this turned out to be a really fun and um, I think important and valuable project. Over 600 of these videos from my students alone are online. And they've been viewed hundreds and hundreds of thousands of times around the world. You can find them on YouTube, but if you just want to watch some of the best ones, I'll just point you to this tiny URL, which is 14D videos, or you can go to my website and you can find these as well. But be careful, they're kind of addictive and uh, they're really quite fun, right? I think I'd like to um, you know, spend most of the rest of the time just showing you one of these videos. And as you watch this, I'd ask you to keep in mind this negative, you know, you know, frightening reputation of organic chemistry, if you will, 
And then as you watch, see if Seda, Laura, Michael, and Andy from several years ago, see if they show that they've learned anything in making this video. See if you can find their intellect and creativity. Also, by the way, important to me is teamwork. And then, um, yeah, see if you laugh at all. See if you think there's humor in this and think about what it is that that does for the students who made this video and anybody who watches it, okay? So hopefully the technology will work here and we'll go ahead and we will, we will play it. But it feels a little bit harder now My head filled with material But it all seems the same When my friends talk Cam all the dodges just tear me down Cause my heart breaks a little When I see my grave I just feel so confused too late to turn things around. You know what your problem is? You're playing all these sad songs, man. Let me show you. You need to play songs more like this. Watch out. This one right here goes out to all the Camp 14D students. And the one and only, Neil Gar. What up? You slay, what's up, baby? It's pretty hard at times, but we can break it down for you. First up, SM2. Backside that attack, inverse it, what it can, what it could, what it won't, what it, what it. Looking for a better way to hit another mechanism, getting on that DMF and acetone wagon. New mech, alkene chopping, a little bit of ozone, a little bit of solvent. Got club meth, then deep miss rocking, gotta be. Yep, yep, ozone analysis. Yes, elk, each split in. My O, double bonded, I got this. Neil Gogsway. Retro sick? Two steps, I shed LGs to make the carbo kept my nuke attack. And that's he what? Da e, da e, oh five, let that heat come down. I got that deals, all the shh, cyclohexene, wow. Easy, I'm breaking the bonds to form some new compounds. But I got that CCL for BR2 bromonium. Trust me, all my M A R K O V N I K O V S N T. Chasing dreams and taking 14 B, no more. Bussin', chillin' with my notes up in my back, 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 crushing, crushing. Ladies, be back. I hear a moment. Tonight is the night. Right for 90 and over. So we raise our hands up. See us 50 can't hold us. Near God can't fail us. Ladies, be back. I hear a moment. Tonight is the night. Over. So we raise our hands up, see us 50 can't hold us Near God can't fail us Okay, so at least I can see uh, Vic getting a good laugh out of this. <laughs> you know, the awkward thing over Zoom talks, right? You can't quite tell how the audience reacts, but I hope you could see that, you know, as you start that video, you don't really know where it's going. They're, they're just being funny. And then it goes pretty hardcore into chemistry and then they, they make it funny again. And I hope, um, you know, for 
those who are not chemists, you can appreciate they mastered material, they were smart, they were creative, and, and sure enough, they made us laugh and they got a little bit of extra credit for it. I think what's also important though, is that you can imagine if you have 400 students making videos like this and going through these experiences where they're laughing together and being part of that experience, they're building community, you're increasing approachability. And I can define that in several ways, but certainly the subject is becoming more approachable and the student engagement is also increasing and the humor is I think very much tied into that. I also um, had a quote from a student um, recently and it was a really interesting one. It commented on um, you know, how professors are usually a little bit scary and then you add on to it that organic chemistry is scary. But the aspect where um, the teachers are there smiling and laughing alongside of the students can also be a motivating factor and can also lead to student empowerment. And so I put this forward to offer that, you know, when you put these things together, including humor, um, it is about empowerment. And then we want students to go off and to be able to solve those tough problems. And so in the final example, I just want to mention briefly about exams. When I think about my exams for science classes in college, I, you know, I, don't, I, I guess I don't want to think about them. They were hard. They were definitely not funny. Um, and, and I guess I don't even want to think about it. And so then you think about what our students go through. And I look at one of my own exams. We'll give students molecules like this, OK? And please take my word for it. These are tough. And we'll ask students, how do you make them using the rules of uh, organic chemistry that you've learned? They can take really tiny building blocks and try to make something bigger. Or they can use something we call the Chem 14D toolbox, which we had an analogy of as a cooler in that demo you saw earlier. And then again, our, our weak attempt at humor here is to incorporate the toolbox with the little fragments that the students may or may not need, but they can use these. But is it okay on an exam for there to be a cartoon of a sandwich in the toolbox? You know, I think when I was a student, I, I don't know what I would have done, but here we see students laughing and smiling while they're taking an exam. So I think it's okay to do this, we do it. And uh, we do see it put a smile on people's face and hopefully it reminds them that it's okay, that these are tough problems, they can panic, they can relax, they have the skills to be able to solve these problems. Okay, so the outcomes I think are, are pretty cool. Students learn how to do this. Typically two thirds of the class can solve problems like these. And again, I just wanna point out that these are second year students not majoring in chemistry or biochemistry. And just for comparison, I didn't learn how to solve problems like this until I was a graduate student at Caltech, right? And the other thing that I think is pretty cool is to look at the student interest in the subject. You can see that's completely transformed. Two thirds of the class now at the end say that their interest in the subject is high, some say medium, and just a handful say that their interest is low. Okay, so I hope, um, again, you can appreciate how we can take you know, this classically feared course and this topic, organic chemistry, and using a combination of things, of course, the intellectual challenge, uh, care and support, but also a lot of fun and a lot of laughter along the way and turn it into a class that's become pretty popular on the UCLA campus. This message, of course, is not one that needs to be restricted to the classroom. Uh, I won't say much except to say that um, we have a lot of fun using humor in other ways to go beyond the classroom. You can see one image here of Elmo being levitated by a bunch of helium balloons. This is at a local school here in uh, Los Angeles. And man, kids think this is hilarious, but they're also learning about the density of gases, right? And then on the right, you know, just a little bit of a hint, my daughters and I have been writing chemistry coloring books. And then recently, two of my coworkers in the research lab thought it'd be fun to have an adult version, which we think is pretty funny. So you can see Cheesy the Mouse, learning about ethanol and uh, you know things like hangovers and whatnot. And this coloring book will be out soon. Whenever it is out, Victoria, if you remind me, I can get copies sent to the students in the class and I hope people will laugh at it and enjoy it. Mm. And so I just close by saying, uh, what is humor? I think it's a powerful teaching tool. Um, I hope you agree. It's a pathway to approachability and engagement. It's a way to build community and it's a vehicle to overcome preconceptions. And then as a teacher, a mentor, um, a husband and a father of four, I can say that humor can be used in many different circumstances and it can be incredibly powerful in helping 
people surmount obstacles and helping people achieve their personal best. So thank you very much, Victoria. I appreciate the opportunity to be here.